where did you last hear me say anything? Uh, you were talking about the nest uh, setup. Like how you have to use the Google Nest, uh, and you, but you bring your own uh, hardware for routers and stuff. Right. Uh, and uh, again, that's because uh, the, the Nest Wi-Fi uh, only has one gigabit Ethernet port where if you're trying to get the five gigabit or anything like that, obviously it, you'll be bottlenecked by your own, by Google's own hardware that they give you. So you pretty much have to bring your own. If you're going for uh, two gig or higher, you're going to have to get your own uh, equipment in order to really take advantage of it. But if you didn't uh, catch it, yeah, all of this is from Ars Technica. I totally forgot about this service. Like I said, they paused this way back in the day and then never heard from it again. And I just assumed this was one of those things that, because unfortunately Google has this problem and it's one of the reasons why, one of the reasons why I don't buy any of their equipment anymore is they have this, this problem of like starting things and then just dropping things. Yep. And just dropping support for it. It's like, well, that's cool. I'm glad I spent $100 on this thing that they no longer support anymore. Sounds about right. And I kind of thought that's what they did here. They That they were just like rolling this out. They're like, this is a cool test market. And we're done. Even if they came to Arizona right now, I would still be hesitant to to get this service because of that like maybe they I don't know I would still probably rather get wired Zona over over Google Fiber yeah even if it is a little bit cheaper just because I know for well I don't know for a fact but I would have a feeling that this would be more of a test project a little side thing that Google does whereas wired Zona is like Specifically, like, this is what we do. Please, please buy our stuff so that we can stay in business. Yeah. Yeah. From that, uh, we do have the semi-announcement that I think uh, I would kind of agree with as far as Marvel and TV shows and Disney Plus all go. Um uh, and that is uh, that Kevin Feige. Is that how you pronounce his last name? I yeah. never remember. Kevin Feige. Kevin Feige uh, has said that they're going to start lessening the number of TV shows and stuff that they have going on, which I agree with. There's just at a certain point, there's just too much content. By the way, he doesn't like the term content. Yeah, I saw uh, that. He hates that term. I'm trying to see what what was the term that he uses. I guess uh, there's so much product out there, and so much content, as they say, which is a word that I hate. But he admitted that Marvel Studios really wants their shows to stand out. They need to space them out more, uh, so they can each get a, a chance to shine. Is what he says. And we'll start to see that shift as as we get further into phase five or phase into phase five and into phase six. So I thought that was interesting, and I do agree. Like they did seem to be releasing too much stuff all at once, and there's a there's a coolness to it with some of these things, but a lot of these shows just didn't really I didn't really care for. The idea of the Marvel TV shows is good. Uh, the execution, on the other hand, not so great. And I yeah. say that because you you cram these movies with giant movie stars, right? And you want those characters to come across, but they are going to be busy doing other things. That's just how it works. Uh, and then having them tied down for a TV show schedule is way harder than a movie. Right. Uh, but also it's like, you know, you, you have to look at your content. Uh, 
and look at how well it's going to push your narrative, but also like support the character. Exactly. Where a lot of the TV show stuff has been almost throwaway stuff. Yes. That could have been a small plot point in a movie or just a, you know, exposition, just said something about whatever it is. Uh, very little of it has been very impactful for the overarching story. Yes. Uh, that's what I was going to say. I would say Loki's the exception. Right, because that really does seem like that's what they're using to kick off the next phase. Yep. Uh, the end of Captain America and Falcon, because mm-hmm. uh, the stuff in the middle was just... I get it, because it's like... It was it, like, action show, and that was basically it. Yeah, like it was t- sort of setting up like the New World Order stuff, you know, they're in, mm-hmm. in, but it's like... You could have done that in the movie. Yeah. And it would have been fine, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, I still think, like, as much as WandaVision was act- was a semi-interesting show in and of itself, it didn't really push the the narrative, the full-scale narrative forward for it, because by the end, she just becomes this essentially the Scarlet Witch and it's like well like you, like you said earlier like you could have just put that into the movie of just like yeah we know by the end of the last movie that she was going down this path and you could have just been in Doctor Strange just like then you introduce it there yeah. it, it also would have been a little bit better of a shock there you know when yeah. she did do the, the villainous turn in Doctor Strange rather than basically seeing it in the TV show, too. I agree. So uh, I thought that was interesting that in some cases it sounds like they're listening to, to fan feedback and saying, hey, this is kind of a little bit much. The you ones know, that... Back. The ones I think they should focus on are the, are the offshoots, like the uh, the, the Miss Marvel one, uh, Moon Knight, things like that, mm-hmm. where it's like... Yeah, I know she's moving forward and she's going to be in the Marvels, but like her story being told is different than like Scarlet Witch going right. going on, you know what I mean? We already know who Scarlet Witch is. But she's a new character, so why don't we focus on those new characters versus you know existing characters? And I agree with that. Like like you said Moon Knight was a really good show. There's a possibility Moon Knight may, may never even show up in anything else. Exactly. Even in the sequel uh, to the show. Which is fine. But that's that's your, yeah, these are other things that are going on type stuff. And you're right with uh, with Miss Marvel. I have yet to watch Miss Marvel. Uh, I think there was a, a lot of people were saying it was pretty good. I just, I think it, by the time it came out, it was that like, well, I have so much other shit to watch. I don't have time to watch this new Marvel thing. Yeah, that's come out. Uh, but having her go into the movies is a pretty good idea, I think. You know, you start out there, and you don't necessarily have to tell her origin story. You can just glaze over it in in the movie because not everybody's going to watch the show. Yeah, and She Hulk is another good good example of how yeah. well they, how well they did it. Uh, you know, she's she's a a, a lesser known character, mm-hmm. but you bring in these other people to fill in the world, you know, to connect it. But what happened to her story wasn't dictated by the bigger narrative. It was her own little pocket adventure. Yeah, they sprinkled in some stuff with, like, the Hulk and, and his son and all that stuff like that, but that's more teasing for stuff coming up versus having her show ultimately end with no pot, like no resolution to anything, you know, what right. it is. Right. So... That's what I think. Yeah, that's what I agree. Moving on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Real quick. A lot of these are just real quick little things. Um, Coming from Uprox, uh, the John Wick director wasn't messing around when he said part four would be the longest yet. Apparently, it is clocking in at two hours and 49 minutes. Yeah, there's an original cut of three hours and 25 minutes that they uh, cut a bunch of stuff out of, apparently. That's a shame. Or three... What was it? Hold on. I saw something about it. 
his original his original cut of the uh before effects obviously were done was like three hours and 15 minutes good god yeah also don't deprive me of of people being killed exactly dude like right Uh, did you watch the trailer I sent over? No, I was in the middle of a workout. You sent it over. Yeah, I haven't watched it either, so don't, don't worry about it. I saw it, and I was like, oh, there it is. Cool. That's... So let's see. Coming from Reeves, a uh, quote from him, John Wick Chapter 4 has the most action of any of the John Wick films, which is saying a lot, uh, Reeves told Total Film. And it's more by... And it's more by a good margin. It's a big show. John Wick Chapter 4 was the hardest physical role I've ever had in my career so far. They really trained me up uh, to be able to have what we call the toolbox. <laughs> Fair enough, I'm not really sure what the toolbox is. Toolbox. This is going to be the last one, right? No? No, I think they have it planned for six. Nice. I think that's what they said they were. Hold on, let's see if they. What the fuck? They're just gonna get longer and longer. The last one's be four and a half hours. I'm okay with that. Has an intermission in between. Yeah. Hateful Eight style, bro. I was gonna say we're gonna Quentin Tarantino this shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Try to see. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Two spinoffs, uh, the baller, or ballerina in the Continental. We know about those. Uh, doesn't have it listed here, but I know they talked about a total of six John Wick centric movies, and then several spinoff stuff. Uh, they confirm the fifth movie is already uh, set design. It's uh, intended to be shot back to back. Oh, they're gonna Lord of the Rings this shit. Uh, he just states, uh, well, Chad states that there will be a fifth installment, but he didn't say anything else about the the other ones. So maybe they just do sit do five. Okay. Ba, ba, ba. Did you uh so I have that like uh inside text thing that they that I joined for John Wick info. Okay. Uh so they send you stuff as the movies get ready to come out, whatever. And they sh they uh said to uh, posters. Nice. And what they did is they sent out a text that basically says, uh, new allies and new adventures, uh, please dial a number listed below. And it gives you what they are. So zero is John Wick. One is the Marquis uh, de Grobit, I guess it is. Uh, all these okay. different ones. And they're all the characters. And so they're character posters. The last one was the one that tripped me out because I knew Scott Atkins was in this movie. Scott Atkins, that name sounds familiar. He does one of those action movies. Like he did... Uh, like uh, uh, like he's in like those undisputed movies, a bunch of other stuff. You know who he was if you saw him, but uh, that's oh okay. He's in a fat suit. That's interesting. And he's called the Killer. <laughs> nice. Uh, and like I was like, wait, what? What? Why? And I was like, I can't wait. I need to watch this new trailer to see if he's in it because like that's exciting to me. I watch it after we're done here. Yep, pretty much. Pretty much. Austin Butler's on Hot Ones today. That's cool. He's also a Dude 2, Part 2. Do you know that? Wait, what? Say that again? Uh, Austin Butler is in Dude Part 2. He's in Dude Part 2. Yeah, I think he plays the, the okay. nephew. 
I heard Austin Butler is a dude part two. Like like somehow you didn't know he was a guy or something. Wait, you did know that? I don't know. I no, I'm not assuming. Uh yeah, I I, don't, I need to look up to see who he plays, but I think he plays the nephew. The one that he's basically that Harkonnen's setting up to take over for as Emperor. Okay. Also, do you know who plays the Emperor? No. Christopher Walken. Nice. I haven't seen him in a movie in a long time. Bro, I, I speaking of which I need to look that up to see if that's actually true. Cause I was like, wait, what? How did I know this? Right. Dude part two. Let's what was look the last thing that Christopher Walken did? Because uh, I feel that it's been ages since I've seen him in any movie. Oh, yeah, and Florence Poe plays the Emperor's uh, daughter. Nice. Yep, yeah, he, uh, Austin Butler plays uh, uh, Fade, the, the nephew of Baron Harkonnen. Nice. Yep, Christopher Walken, uh, Shadam the Fourth, Emperor of uh, House uh, Corino. That's fucking wild. There's an article that I ran across a couple of uh, weeks ago that I, I have saved on here. I was going to talk about it, but again, it was just another one of those little uh, uh, things. Let me actually see if I can pull it up real quick. Because it was Dune 2. Uh, Batista was talking about how uh, Dune 2 will be a little bit more funny than the first movie. And it's just like, the fuck does he consider funny? Yeah, what was funny in the first one? It was like all tragedy. The So it's from Inverse, and the title is Dune 2 will be hilarious, says actor whose character killed his own dad. Yeah. Uh, so interview, let's see, in an interview for Collider, uh, here's what Batista had to say about Dune Part 2. Uh, this is so amped up from the first film. The first film was just an introduction to what this film is. There is just so much going on. It's so, it's so much more cutthroat and political and intense, and there are moments of levity where uh, there is some funny moments, and they're kind of absurd humor, uh, but there are those moments. So that's what he had to say about it being, quote-unquote, funnier. Okay. Or hilarious, I should say, according to the title. Right? So it's just like, what do you consider hilarious about Dune? But I'm down to see it. I don't care. Well, I'm going to watch it no matter what. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make sure I get to the theaters. We still have yet to see uh, Avatar 2. Dude. Life, man. It? I swear. Apparently, Christopher Walken was in Severance in 2022. Okay. The Outlaws. Those are two TV shows. There's not a movie that I recognize in here. Well, that's good, I guess. Going back to the Jungle Book, apparently. He did the voice of King Louis. Yeah. The Jungle Book in 2016. So he's, he's been doing stuff. It's just nothing that I really know. Nothing major? Yeah. Interesting. Oh, well. Speaking of interesting, yeah. I know that you're going to love this. You're going to rush out and buy this as soon as it's available. Let me get my purchasing phone out. Go ahead. Okay. I'm going to give you a second here to be prepared for this. Okay, I'm ready. Pepsi X Peeps. Yeah, go fuck yourself, Joe. <laughs> so I thought this actually launched, uh, that they said that this launched last year. It did. Apparently, well, apparently it was two years ago. Oh, yeah, really oh, yeah two years ago, yeah. Uh, that uh, uh, it was only available the first year as a just a giveaway. Yeah. Uh, but then I guess last year it actually hit retail shelves, and it's coming back again in time for Easter. Peeps X Pepsi or Pepsi X Peeps is what it's called. Yep. It's Peep I'm down to Pepsi. try it because I never tried it before. You're disgusting. I don't care. <laughs> it probably just vaguely tastes like marshmallow. Yeah, shitty marshmallow. I mean, yeah. 
You have to experience it once. Oh, the Peeps flavored soda is the first time ever Pepsi has used marshmallow flavoring. Should be the last time, too. I mean, I can't say that it was great. I know, uh, well, no, Coke didn't do it. No, it was just called marshmallow. It was just called marshmallow. (laughs) Actually, wait. I have to try it. No. That can't be right. Oh, that was the first time, because the second time was the s'mores one. Yes, they had the s'mores one, which I never got around to trying either. But, but that the was one. That no, came wait, didn't out. We tried it. We didn't try the s'mores one. No, we didn't try the s'mores one. But that was that weird one too that I wish we would have tried because it came in. What was it? One can that tasted like graham cracker. One can that tasted like chocolate. And one can that tasted like s'mores. Yeah, you're supposed to mix them together. Yes. Or marshmallow, not s'mores. Uh, but yeah, so it's it's coming back. Uh, according to this article, there really isn't uh, a date as far as I could see or remember uh, I don't know if I saw so if you want to try it start uh, start looking at your local uh, local shops and stuff I will shops not be stuff. looking for it I'll be looking for it because I do like to try these these uh, boutique sodas Coke has something coming out too. Oh, I didn't save the article. Anyway, uh, Coke has uh, something coming out too. They're a part of their. Oh fuck! What was the name of that? Uh, Creations. Creations. Yeah. yeah, it's called Move. It's uh, rose flavored. Oh, it's rose flavored. Because the last thing I read is that they had not announced what the flavor was yet. But it's rose flavored. Yep. Uh, so uh, Pepsi Pepsi X Peeps is hitting stores now. Uh, it's been found at uh, Walmart, Kroger, uh, and uh, some other retailers. But that's the biggest one so far as Walmart and Kroger's. Mostly it looks like on the East Coast, slowly coming our direction. Fine. Whatever. As long as I get to try it. I just want to try one can. That's yeah. it. Just that, one can. Is that what you want? It's not going to be good. I'm telling you, it's not going to be good. Uh-huh. I'm not saying that it's going to be good. It's definitely not going to be good. Definitely not going to be good. Speaking of things that should be good, though, did you see they released the posters for the Flash movie? Uh, yeah. They look dope. Although, Michael Keaton's Batman has the weirdest looking on his face, and I don't understand it. It's his old man look, dude. I mean, yeah. But it's just this, like, hmm, kind of, like, look. When's this coming out? June 16th. So yeah, close. yeah, yeah. It's so far. Anyway, the trailer for that, uh, for the Super Bowl, was a, I think was one of the most watched uh, trailers there, because you had, you had, the Flash movie, you had Guardians of the Galaxy, and Fast X. There was one more. What was it? Fast X. Fast X, yeah. And I think they, uh, someone had said that uh, the Flash movie was the most rewatched of all of them. I don't know on where or what. Uh, probably YouTube. Yeah, probably. Did you watch the full length trailer? For uh... I have, yes. Okay, for for Flash, and for <laughs> yeah. Guardians, I guess too. And for what? Guardians? Guardians? No, I didn't watch the full length trailer for Guardians. Uh, it just shows a lot more stuff. Uh, I'm sure. Including Rocket's new buddy. Oh, yeah? Yep. New he's buddy? A, he's an otter. Well, I do remember that in another one yeah. of the other. They uh, teased trailers. it, yeah. Yeah. That's cool. I will have to go back and watch that. But yeah, the uh, the Flash movie just looks fucking dope. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. So the final thing that I have saved here was a really weird thing. So apparently, let me see if I can remember most of this. A few years ago, there was a Jason Jason Statham and Guy Ritchie movie that they had made, and it just kind of like went silent on the uh, the release. Operation it's Fortune finally coming out. Yeah, the trailer's out. 
Yeah. Yeah. I watched part of it, uh, and I was going to send it to you guys, and I can't remember what happened. I think it was in a shitty cell phone signal area. So it's called Operation Fortune Ruse de Guerre. Guerre? Yeah. Something like that. Coming March 3rd. Also stars Carrie Eels, uh, Hugh Grant, Josh Harnett, uh, Audrey Plaza. Uh, the reason why that it got pushed back, according to this article, is because it features Ukrainian uh, bad guys, essentially. And they were just like, ugh, this is uh, not uh, not something that we want to publish right at this moment. Yeah, it's because it's about Ukrainian mobsters. Yeah. I'm trying to remember if they said that they changed anything in it. I don't know, actually. Or they're just releasing it as is. I don't see that anywhere in here. But I thought that was weird because I know I like Guy Ritchie movies and I don't remember anything about this thing. It was just odd to me that a Guy Ritchie movie would be pushed back quietly so much, especially Guy Ritchie, Jason Statham. Like, there's big names in this movie. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, so it comes out March 3rd, opposite Creed 3, which is like, okay, let's bring this thing out and then let's, let's put it up let's, against Creed 3. Let's bury it, yeah. Yeah, right? Like, Jesus Christ, guys. Yeah, it's not the best... Uh... Uh, strategy. Uh, I guess you have to try and make some of your money back, but, but if man. if you're in the UK on April seventh, you could watch it on Amazon Prime Video. Really? Yep. Well, I won't be so. Yeah, uh, and it's actually already out internationally. Interesting. On uh, January fourth, I mean, it's done. They should have just released it on, like, I, well, I don't know. I was going to say they should have just released it streaming. If That was the plan originally. About. That's what they said. They were going to initially just move it to a streaming platform. Oh, yeah? And they're like, you know what? No. No, we're going to put this in theaters. We believe in quietly. this movie. Up against Creed 3. They're yeah. Like, they're like, that sounds fuck. Good. Anyway, that's all I had saved for this week to talk about. Well, well, he does. Um, I think I have. Well, I was gonna say earlier, I forgot where I put uh, where I saved the article from, but I found it. It was on Apple News. Uh, Kevin Feige did uh, mention some other stuff about uh, Phase Five and for and further on uh, okay. during this week. Didn't want to be, you know overshadowed by uh, James Gunn of the DCU. But uh, he mentioned that uh, the Fantastic Four will be a big pillar uh, going forward in MCU. I figured as much. Uh, that they have finalized uh, the script for Spider-Man 4, which Tom Holland will be returning for. Cool. Uh, he announced, uh, or he, I guess announced, yeah, the the role of uh, Thunderbolt Ross uh, now being played by Harrison Ford in Captain America 4. Fuck yeah. He will be the president. Nice. Yep, okay. so that's pretty awesome. Makes sense. I mean, he's got experience doing exactly. that role. Yep. Uh, so that's kind of cool, obviously, because, you know, Harrison Ford and should be president anyways. Uh, what else was there? What did you say? Uh, Kang is uh, the most highly rated villain so far on test greetings. Really? Uh, right. Yep. Uh, he also stated that he will be a very big player, obviously, uh, in, the, in, the, in the future of the MCU. Uh, and he, say, he said not just Phase 5, but in the future. So we can see more of Kang throughout this versus just the... Uh, the these movies and going into the next two Avenger movies, so that's kind of cool. Uh, he mentioned the TV show stuff that you saw. Uh, what else was there? I do like the 
fact that uh, it seems like Kang's going to be hold, uh, holding, uh, sticking around for a little bit, because I know that's something that uh, uh, James Gunn had mentioned about the DC movies and, and other Marvel movies in the past, uh, whereas it seems like they just kill off their villains, and he was one of the type of person that's like, you know, I don't want to kill off these villains because they're good villains. Let's keep them around to do villain stuff. Yep. You know, later on. So if they keep Kang around, you know, they could defeat him and you'd just be like, I'll get you next time. And then just like, you know, go away or something like that. It'd be interesting to be able to bring him back. Also, because it's a multiverse, there's we know there's multiple versions of him. That's true, too. Yeah, he could literally come back because it's a different him. Yep. I think that was... Because uh, you talked about the show stuff already. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that was about it. It occurs to me that when I was mentioning all the uh, movie trailers that they showed during the Super Bowl, I totally forgot about Indiana Jones. And I don't know how I could forgive myself for that. Oh, it's true, yeah. That was another dope trailer to yeah. watch. And apparently the de-aging that they did on him, on Harrison Ford, is the most expensive de-aging that Disney's ever done. I mean, it is a kind of a lot of de-aging. Harrison Ford is pretty old right now. Yeah. But apparently it's just whatever techniques that they're they're using, or probably using a combination of techniques in order to de-age him, uh, just cost that much to do. And of course, depending on how it actually goes, because... It seems like it's a time travel movie that might be re, re retconning or resetting some of the things that have happened in the previous Indiana Jones movies. Uh, it sounds like he may be like time jumping a lot. So yeah, there's going to be a lot of de de aging in it, not just a few scenes here and there. <laughs> it's true. That's funny. Uh, so Kevin Feige brought up the fact that we're coming up on the 23, uh, 23 years of Marvel. Okay. Uh, and it has been 15 years since Iron Man, obviously. God, wow. Yeah, weird, right? And Quantumania is the 31st movie. Jesus Christ. And he said 31, which is also weird because Mask and Robbins, they have 31 on everything. Okay. Weird, right? Okay. And do you remember where he, Scott Lang worked at? Baskin Robbins. Yeah. We, what, what is this, some kind of synchronicity? Weird, right? Yeah, weird. They're going to start just showing Duncan, or Duncan, uh, Baskin Robbins is going to start showing up in more things now? Maybe. That's their 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 go-forward uh, sponsor is uh, Baskin Robbins. Okay, here's, here's what we do. You have 31 flavors of... Marvel. So Marvel flavored ice creams? Marvel flavored ice cream. 31 different flavors. That sounds kind of gross. Each ice cream is themed to that movie. Tetris, what? <laughs> uh, it's the trailer I set. Oh. It's a... It's a it's a mini series on Apple TV or, or movie. I can't remember what it said it was, uh, based on the written, the origins of Tetris. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it has uh, Joel Edgerton in it, or I mean, uh, Taron Edgerton in it. The origins of Tetris are semi interesting. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see how uh, Apple uh, does it. Well, I guess it's based on a book that was written about it. Okay. So I don't know if that helps any or, or not, but that's what it said. Okay. Uh, was there anything else that I had? Uh, it looks like uh, Ant-Man's getting review bombed, though. Really? Yep. Why? What's, uh, what's the reason now? Uh, I didn't see it what it was, uh, pe but people are like uh, going on there and like they they already like the Rotten Tomato score was going down before uh, early advanced screenings were even played. Okay. 
Because there was media stuff on Monday, I think it was. And then there was preview screenings Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, obviously, it comes out today, of a re- time of recording today. National release on Friday, the day this episode comes out. Uh, but it was already uh, getting going lower than uh, uh, Ragnarok, I think it was. Wow. Yeah. And then people are shitting on uh, on their version of uh, Modoc. Oh, really? Saying that the animation's really poor. Uh, and it's a terrible design, and he's ugly. I was like, uh... He's not, he's not a beautiful-looking person. Yeah, Modoc's a terrible-looking human being, so... Or a creature, I should say. Yeah. So I don't know. But yeah, I saw that, and I was like, oh, okay, I guess. If that's what you want to do is bomb on a movie you haven't actually seen yet. But who am I to say anything about it, right? Right. I'm trying to find to see if there's any direct reason as why people are review bombing it, but nothing I can really find. Because people are shitty? I mean, yeah, there's always that, but... Usually there's a reason why people are being shitty. It's not a good reason, I would say. Just there's a reason. But then again, it is the internet, and there can be no reason sometimes. Yeah, Ant-Man's at 50% right now on Rotten Tomatoes. Because why? Yeah. Why can't I read reviews? Are they locking the reviews? Well, the embargo went up already. Like, I'm seeing actual reviews for it, and a couple aren't great, at least in their scoring system. Huh, that's weird. How do you take this headline from from Collider? Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, early reactions call it the MCU's Star Wars. It's a very vague title that could mean anything. Are they talking about the new Star Wars, where people didn't really like it? Are they talking about the old Star Wars, where people did like it? Uh, okay. I don't know. I guess I'd have to read the article in order to find out, but I'm not. Yeah, I'm not going to do that either. Ha ha. Uh, the last bit that I have uh, is not really that important. That's why I saved it to the end. But uh, there's a movie called Infinity Pool. I don't know if Joe's ever heard of this movie or not. It's it a does horror movie. Sound familiar, yes. Uh, it is supposed to be one of the weirdest, most disgusting uh, horror movies out. So I'm not gonna like it. Yeah, I don't know what, what, why, why though. Uh, but anyhow, so it comes about that uh, a crew member was given a uh, promotional gift from the 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 makers of the movie, obviously. Uh, okay. and it is kind of throwing the internet into like a wait what. It is a what? jar of artificial semen. Okay. That elicits a why. Uh, yep. Uh, and the jar, the picture of the jar, it has uh, printed labels on it uh, that literally say uh, artificial semen. And it says, uh, let's see if I can get it, uh, while non-toxic Mouth safe. Uh, Jesus, what just happened? Get off me. Stop that. I will punch you in the face. Stupid ass Twitter. Thanks, Elon. Uh, it says, uh, contains a bunch of science words that I don't know, including glycos or gly- glycol? glycol. Glycol? I don't know. Uh, user accepts responsibility for safe use is on is labeled on it. It is a 
a giant a giant mason type jar uh, of artificial semen. Okay. I'm reading through like an like a quick synopsis of it on on uh, Wikipedia, and I don't know where that would come in, in into play. <laughs> I don't either, but apparently they had enough of it to send out jars of it to uh, their crew members, so. That's uh, weird. I thought it was funny myself. Interesting. The plot of this movie is, is really weird. The trailer's really weird, too. I guess I'd have to watch a trailer. So at least according to Wikipedia, at least the the... the first part of the article i'm not going to read the actual whole plot here uh infinity pool is a 2023 science fiction horror film written and directed by brandon cronenberg which is that is he related to um yes he is he is okay um i suddenly spaced out on on like his relations name but uh <laughs> more famous cronenberg uh starring alexander skarsgård and mia goth and cleopatra coleman Yep. So it's not like there aren't there are small names in this movie. No, sir. The film follows a struggling writer and his wife on vacation who, after an accident, discover the country's dark culture. That's very interesting. Yeah, you can watch the trailer. It's pretty uh, uh, weird. Okay, I guess I will have to watch the trailer. Uh, and yeah, he's the son of uh, David Cronenberg. David Cronenberg. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Yeah, who makes weird, fucked up movies to begin with? So, no surprise that his son would do that as well. Yep. I want to say this is his. Uh, it's not his first movie. It's like a. I'd say he's a bunch so far. Like three. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, according to this, according to Wikipedia, he's got three. So, Antiviral in 2012, Possessor in 2020, and Infinity Pool 2023. All of these he both directed and wrote. And he's also got a television series that hasn't come out yet, it looks like. Yeah. Called Super Cans that he's written and directed. It's in development right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I highly wa I highly recommend watching the trailer because it won't help your uh, understanding of what the hell the movie's about. I bet not. Uh, but you may understand more about the artificial semen. I don't want to ruin it for you, but please don't ru ruin the artificial semen scene for me. A well, lot, sir. Do well, okay. So there is a it mentioned here engages in intoxicated orgies. So I guess I can yeah. see maybe that there's that's where you use artificial semen there don't know why but okay i don't know why that you had so much pretty uh graphic <laughs> if you're getting into the artificial stuff glazed glazed he says i can't i'll never be able to eat a fucking crispy cream again <laughs> uh fried donut butthole fried donut butthole uh but i think that's all i had all right, yeah, I, that's I, all I have. I thought it was a good way to end it, talking yeah, about artificial I, semen. Yep. So, uh, producers, give me that whole uh, let's get this uh, shit over with uh, signal. Yep. Uh, so, th this has been Comes Naturally. Uh, we have been. Joe. I've been Cody, and as usual, you fuckers just came naturally. Bye.